Hi everyone, welcome back to the Morgan Homestead. I'm Kevin. And I'm Sandy. And today I'm going to take you over to the greenhouse and show you how I set up the hydroponic garden inside the greenhouse, as well as show you everything that I've got planted and ready to go in my raised beds. And I'm going to take you over and show you the big garden, what we got going on over there, and then also what I have planted along with the potatoes in the potato garden. And stick around to the end because I have some exciting news that's going to bring our log cabin build a little closer to being finished. Alright, out in the greenhouse today, finally getting ready to um, plant in my hydroponic setups out here. So I've got all the totes filled up with water, so today I'm going along and I'm adding the nutrients. Let me show you what I'm So the nutrients that I add to my hydroponic totes are the Master Blend Tomato and Vegetable Formula, and then I add this Calcium Nitrate. These this is from is a power grow um, brand and then I have Epsom salt and this is what I had left over from last year so those three um, and I have uh, I have a chart here that tells me all the nutrients and what they need the plants need and so we figured it out so what I do is I measure that out into a bucket and I'll go along and then I'll add the needed nutrients to each tote. And then I will take this, which is like a probably a cement mixer, and I will mix it up. Whoops. I'll mix that up and then I'll leave it set for a bit and I'll continue on down the row and I'll get all of the nutrients filled in all of the containers and then I'll come back along I've got more over there I'll come back along one more time and mix it really well and then I'll put the lids on everything and then I'll be ready to start putting plants in Okay, I got the nutrients in all of the totes except three. I ran out, I did not have enough nutrients to do all of them, so I'm gonna have to order more nutrients. But for now, I'm just gonna go around, I'm gonna give another stir to each of these totes, and then I'm gonna put the lids on them, and then I'm gonna go get my plants, finally. Okay, I think I've shown this in other videos, but just in case you're new, um, when putting things in hydroponics. So you'll take them out of the dirt, just very gently tap the dirt to get a lot of that loose soil off, what I do. And then I will dip it in the water and swish it around. And get most of that dirt off. You don't have to get all of it off, just most of it like that. And you're gonna grab a net pot then I will typically take a butter knife and I will just very gently work the ends of the roots through the hole and then I'll give it a good gentle tug as gentle as I can be to get the roots hanging out as low as I can because again we want them to be at least the ends of the roots to be in the water. So now I'm just going to fill this up with um, clay pebbles. So then I'm just going to scoop down, take my clay pebbles and fill up the pot. Just kind of, and these will just hold the plant in place and then the roots will actually grow in and around these pebbles but they will just kind of keep they, they serve a couple purposes one 
to keep the plant in place and two to keep the sunlight from getting through into the water because you don't want that to happen algae can grow so now this guy's ready to go in the tote so I will just plop it down and we have one done California wonder pepper it's the first one of the season so I'm gonna continue on right down the row and get all these done what I'm planting today is so far California Wonders, Hungarian Hot Wax, King of the North, and Fresno Chili Peppers. So I'm gonna continue to get all these in. Sometimes the roots are too short. The ones back here, the roots were just too short. They wouldn't hit the water if I put them in, so I'm just gonna grow those a little longer. I think this is probably about the perfect size. When they're about three to five inches high, the roots should be long enough in these to um, to plant. But if they're not, just set them aside and grow them out a little bit more. So I have my whole greenhouse planted and there's a few onions in here, but other than that, it's all peppers. And I have my flowers, my hanging baskets planted to draw in some pollinators. And as I sat here, beautiful mama monarch came in with her baby so I thought that was kind of fun the baby's over on the right hand side there beautiful so I have milkweed planted outside and that's it hasn't bloomed yet but interesting that we're getting the monarchs already I think it's a monarch um, anyway, so I have all of my totes planted. I didn't have enough of the nutrients to do these last three totes. Um, I think I'm gonna just leave it for now. Um, but it'll be, this is where what they look like now. There are like one, two, three, four, five, six larger pepper plants in my raised bed here that I purchased from a nearby greenhouse. But other than that, everything else in here I started from seed so everything in the totes and all the other pepper plants in the raised bed I started from seed so I'm excited to see how well everything grows but this is what it looks like right now this is another raised bed I have outside and I have two rows like one two three six plants that I purchased here otherwise the rest of these are also ones that I grew from seed and then along the side here I've got my acorn squash that'll climb up the trellis here and over here more acorn squash and then I have some flowers planted on the corners to draw in the pollinators over here I have a couple bean plants that'll climb up on the end here and then um, the rest of these are yellow straight neck squash on the front here that I've planted again I usually do flowers in and amongst my beds to draw in pollinators and then this whole thing other than the two corners I have romaine lettuce um, is all beans and I've got 12 plants coming up so far is what I've counted here's one there's another one there three and then there's 12 total but I think more will come I'm gonna give it some more time and then yep you guessed it another full bed of peppers I love my peppers I love putting them in salsa I love have um, they're so easy to freeze dry and also just to freeze to dice and freeze for breakfast with eggs so yeah I do a lot of peppers this is my perennial bed and again I like to have the milkweed and the flowers to dry in the pollinators Kevin swears this one in the back is a weed but it looks like it's about ready to bloom, so I'm going to go ahead and leave it. 
and see what it is, first of all. And the flowers will draw in my pollinators, so I'm not too worried about it, if, even if it is a weed. Like this one here. I think this might be... I can't tell if this is a weed or if this is milkweed. I don't know. Well, anyway, once it all blooms, I'll know. And then I still have these two beds I want to do carrots in. So I got to get my butt motivated to get those planted. Soon. And then outside here I have some sweet basil planted back there. Along with some flowers in the front. I have more romaine lettuce planted there. I have oregano planted in the back with some flowers in the front here. Some cilantro growing in a pot here. This looks like some rogue chamomile that is growing out of the floor, <laughs> the ground by the um, door here. So I don't know, I'm gonna leave it and see if that's what it is. And then I've just got a bunch of uh, flowers planted in front of the greenhouse here. And my girls gave me a really cool blueberry bush. I planted that in this pot because it is not a zone three, so I might have to move it inside during the winter, but that's in the middle. Well, hopefully that will bloom or grow. And then over here, I have some rosemary growing in the big pot along with some flowers. And then I have more lettuce down below here. So that's what I've got going on in the greenhouse. Right, so this is where we plant our potatoes um, mainly <clears throat> so we have two rows of potatoes they're russet potatoes one there and one here and then I also am doing kind of an experiment over in this garden for peas and onions something we haven't had a lot of success in our big garden so I just have a few onions planted here in this row so we'll see how that goes and they seem to be growing a little bit right now. And then in this row, I planted some peas. So there's a few growing. It still doesn't look great, but we'll see how that goes. I wanted to compare between this garden and over there. Then also <clears throat> we have a couple cantaloupe plants right here. It's the first time we've grown cantaloupe, so we'll see, see what that does. And then two pumpkins. Now these are a baking pumpkin. Uh, something last year where we did more of an ornamental pumpkin. This year we're going to try some baking pumpkins. And then we have a little patch of asparagus also growing on the end. Hopefully we'll, we're, we're planning on expanding that. Um, but yeah that's that's it for this garden. Okay so now we're over in the big garden. Now this garden we've scaled back quite a bit this year. I never had a lot of good luck with anything growing down on this end of the garden. So we've kind of closed this off till we can figure out what will grow the best over in this area. It's not completely full sun. It does get quite a bit of sun though throughout the day. But we just haven't had any luck growing things down here. So if we come down this way, the first row of plants that we have, we, have, we, we decided we have quite a bit of pickles and stuff already canned up. So this year we're only going with one cucumber plant. And then we also have one small patch of zucchini. And then the next three rows, three rows here are tomatoes. Um, we have the uh, sauce tomatoes, like the romas and, and stuff here in the first couple rows, and then a row of slicer tomatoes for eating fresh and canning. So now we have four rows of onions. Onions is one thing that we haven't had a lot of luck in. This is the first year we've had, we're putting them in this garden. Um, so we'll see how that goes. We have, there's a combination of reds, whites, and yellow onions through these four rows.
And actually we have, at the end of this row is also onions. But here we have a few uh, cabbage plants. Now cabbage is another thing we had, didn't have much luck. We tried to grow it down at the other end of the garden, um, but didn't have any luck. So we moved it down here to see how that's gonna go. One thing we're also going to try is maybe plant these later in the summer to harvest in the spring because they do like cooler weather. And down on this end, we're growing peas. This is the first time we planted peas down on this end of the garden because we didn't have any luck on the other end. So we'll see how that's going to go. Um, it gets a little more sun down on this end, so we'll see. And then we have six rows of corn. My first two rows is a, is a real sweet corn for eating fresh on the cob. And then the last few rows here are, it, it's still a sweet corn, but it's not as sweet. Um, it's supposed to be better for canning. So we hope to get a bunch for canning. And then the very last row is the, the, the very large uh, sunflowers. They seem to be doing pretty good this year. Last year we didn't have much luck with them, but every hole right now has germinated and sprouting, so hopefully we have better luck this year with those. Okay, so that's it for the big garden. Okay, thank you for sticking around, letting us show you how our, we set up our garden this year. And as, as things progress in the garden, we'll, we'll bring you along and give you some updates on that. Yeah, you might have noticed there's a lot of things that we didn't plant this year. Um, so we were having trouble planting, um, getting some things to grow. So we just kind of eliminated those and we might bring them back into our um, garden eventually as soon as we figure out how to grow them. But, um, and the exciting news on the log cabin update is we finally got our interior stain in. It has been on back order for over a year. so. We're really excited to finally be able to go in and get some more work done on the inside of the house. And we'll definitely bring you along for those updates. And Kevin has materials on order for the railing. So we're going to be working on that soon. And so if you're following us for the log cabin updates, please stick around for that. Thanks for joining us today and we'll see you on the next video. Bye for now.